a return appearance by Casey Rogers Adams, who is, uh, pull that mic closer to you, Casey, my apologies, I should have set that up a little bit better for you before you sat down, uh, but she is the director of Martinsburg's band, and uh, great to have you in the studio again. Thank you. How's the uh, the tournament of band season been going for you? Great. We actually just wrapped it up this past Saturday mm-hmm. after we did the Apple Harvest Parade, and uh, we got the highest score that we've gotten in over two decades. Over two so, decades? Yeah. So it was 87.17. Um, we took second place behind Fort Hill. Um, They're the, always good, too. Yeah, they jumped down to our competition um, or our category, to say, but the kids were ecstatic. It was it was awesome. We we were trying to look through, like, the record books, but, you know, the scores have never been written down. Mm-hmm. But I know at least when I was in high school, um, it's at least been that long since we've had that high of a score. And even my staff, um, even since they've been in high school, we haven't had anything that high. Congratulations. So it's awesome. Yeah, good explain to, to us, year. Casey, what do you mean by score? How is it evaluated? Who does evaluation? What goes into it and so forth? So in the tournament of bands, there are, um, this weekend, I think there were four or five judges. There was a percussion judge, um, which our percussion section scored 0.3, ten, or t- three-tenths of a point away from the first place, um, which was really impressive. There's a color guard judge. Um, there's music analysis, general effect. So they're doing your drill. Um and then ensemble analysis. Okay. So just really picking apart the music and the, the mm-hmm. drill sets and stuff yeah. like that. Are these judged simultaneously? Like there's one yes. performance and different judges doing? Yes, each recorder, each uh, judge has their own tape, and then we get the tapes that we get to listen to. So I listened to them this morning. And is the musicianship itself also judged? Yes, so that's kind of all thrown in there as well. And that's how you get a grade. Yep. Yeah. That's well, that's, that's awesome. When, when Fort Hill used to play Martinsburg, they'd mm-hmm. always bring their band down here. And uh, that was a great halftime show when you had the Martinsburg Band, which was always good. Who was the director back in the 90s? Uh, John Lynch. John Lynch, yeah. John Lynch Sr., yeah. And then Fort Hills Band, which was always very Mm -hmm. impressive. So that's uh, that's great that the two of you had a chance to go head-to-head again. Yeah, it was great to wrap it up that way. Like I said, the kids were ecstatic, so and all of us were impressed um, Mm -hmm. with them because they've made phenomenal progress this season. Now, what happens to the kids who played in the band after the tournament of band season is over and football season ends? What happens the rest of the year? Uh, They stick with me, and we flip into concert band. So um, there's 21 Color Guard members. That puts us a little over 100 for concert band, so they'll be with me for the rest of the year. Okay. What, and what what do the kids do who don't play a musical instrument but that are part of the the band itself, the flags? The flags. Whatever, yeah. um, this year, uh, Color Guard is actually one full class period. Mm-hmm. So um, my assistant Color Guard instructor, DK Rankin, he'll be coming in um, and working with them to prepare, do like some clinics and stuff like that. Uh, we're not going to have an indoor program this year because of just money and you know time and the resources and stuff like that. But um, he's going to come in and work with them. So we do have the Apple Blossom Parade coming up in May, mm-hmm. the Cherry Blossom Parade um, in D.C. coming up in April, and then we're taking the kids to the Strawberry Festival in Buchanan um, at the end of May. So we have dev- different things to prepare for. And how do you pay for all these things? <laughs> I don't know. It takes money. <laughs> it always does. So, yeah. Yeah, how are you raising it? Um Right now, the boosters, um, we're trying to do some different things. Um, I know we'll talk about uniforms, but that's a completely different thing. Um, Our travel is paid. Um, Berkeley County Schools gives us a portion of that, and then we pay those bus drivers when we go somewhere. Um, But when we take charter buses and stuff, that really comes out of the band boosters. So if the band boosters wouldn't do as well as they do, um, which we're grateful for, we wouldn't be traveling as much. And let's talk about those uniforms and, and paying for new uniforms because these are very expensive. I was shocked to learn how much a band uniform costs. Yes. So we actually, my first year in 2021, I ordered 100 uniforms. And I'll tell you a little bit about the backstory, um, which is important for the community to know. So these uniforms, I designed them from a replica version, basically from the ones that I wore when I was in high school that John Lynch and Rosemary Lynch designed. Um, and it was really cool because when we ordered these from DeMolin Brothers and Company out in Illinois, um, the lady that sold the uniforms back to John Lynch was also our representative and our dealer, um, Elaine Kerr. She was selling them to us as well. So she stayed in the picture throughout all these years. So she knew what the design was and what I was trying to go for. Um, but I wore these uniforms in high school. I didn't have the pleasure of having Mr. Lynch as a teacher, um, but he was definitely a mentor. He, gra- or he uh, retired, I guess, when I was in eighth grade was his last year. Um, But when I was a color guard, a flag runner back in the day when I was in middle school, I remember seeing the marching band be like, that's really cool. And I know I told you the story before, I didn't want to do marching band, but my mom was kind of like, you're going to do it for one year. And I'm glad I did. So for me, marching band, I always want to be traditional and I want to look classy. And those uniforms just stuck out to me. When I saw Martinsburg band, that's what I saw. So when I recreated these uniforms, um, they're the same style. They're white and black, um, which back then it was reversed. It was more um, white than it was black. But now we've got more black than white. 
Um, the M is actually taken from the football field, the logo on the football field, to uh, represent like a new era, I said. We have our new um, Bulldog Band logo on the back of the jacket. The hats are the same, um, very, very similar, except for we do have an orange M that's on the mirrored plate um, to kind of represent our new era. And then, you know, the same bibbers and which are the, you know, the bib overalls you wear underneath are the exact same. Mm -hmm. So when people wear those, um, especially the kids, it was it was funny because you go to a lot of these competitions like on Saturday and all the newer bands um, or the more modern bands, I guess you could say, have um, their own specific costume and they change them up every year where we're very traditional and the kids like that. Um, it looks very professional. I know being in the Apple Harvest Parade, everybody talked about the uniforms and stuff like that. So I ordered 100 my first year. Um, my second year, I ordered 20 more. Third year, I ordered 20 more. And now this year, I need to order 25 more. So we're only losing 14 seniors. Um, and then we're going to have about anywhere between 30 and 35, 40 middle schoolers that are coming in. So the kids are a range of sizes. So we need to have enough sizes to fit all the students. And unfortunately, this year, I got to the point where I had to turn away five or six kids because I just didn't have any uniforms to fit them. Um, you know, they're, they're all different sizes. And it's first come, first serve. But mm -hmm. I hate to turn students away. Um, because I want them to be a part of something, you know, as great as the Bulldog Band. So we're raising money. We're doing sponsor uniform. Um, these 25 uniforms are $19,935, um, which brings it to about seven ninety seven forty for one uniform head to toe. I told you I was shocked by the cost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it goes up every year. And that was a price that, you know, I had to write the check the other day because they locked it in for 60 days. Yeah. Um, so we did have to go ahead and purchase them. And so what we're trying to do is raise money to kind of, you know, refurbish that amount and, you know, replenish our, we do have a uniform funds, uh, uniform reserves account within our band boosters, um, that we're trying not to touch. Um, but we're trying to put some money back into that, but we had to order raincoats this year and that cost around, um, $6,000 for 55 raincoats. So with just the logos and the print and everything that's on them. Um, these are custom uniforms, so we had to go ahead and order them because they're in production for 185 days. And what about the drum major uniform? So I actually keep those the same. I just switch up the color of the plume, um, which is the feathers on their head. That's just an orange plume, and that's because um, I think it was my senior year, the other drum major and I wanted orange plumes to kind of set ourselves apart. And my senior year in 2009, that's really where we were like, you know, we're not going to dress up as drum majors anymore, which some bands do, which is it's pretty cool. Um, but it goes with the traditional aspect of it. And we just wanted something to set us apart. We got made fun of for a while because we just look like traffic cones. But now the kids <laughs> love it. You know, they will do anything to wear an orange plume. So that's how we just set them apart. And then they do wear white pants instead of black. Maybe we should get orange plumes here. for yeah. the There we go. <laughs> the coast, right? yeah. Now, when a grad does a graduating senior carry the uniform with them no they do not no nope, they it. keep it um when we got rid of the uniforms from john lynch i remember purchasing mine i think for like a hundred dollars mm, or something yeah. like that um just to keep it so i was able to do that with my uniform at shepherd too and they're actually my high school uniform um and my shepherd uniform are hanging up in my office at school cool so and i presume on these uniforms that you say they're custom made but the trousers must be adjustable with buttons for four or five inches at the waist well it's and, just one and... zipper up and then they have straps to kind of you know for the length and stuff like that but um we have all various sizes so and, and we have to do order a lot of lodge or a lot of large jackets because the drummers put their harnesses underneath mm -hmm. so you can't really see their harness you just see their drum so mm -hmm. that's why we're always up in arms of what sizes to order but we did place our order um last week so where are most of these uniforms made um illinois I think it's Greenville, Illinois, at DeMolin Brothers and Company. Do most bands go through that shop? Um, they're normally like the standard, but I know now with the some modern bands doing different costumes, they go through band shop and different things like that. But each of our uniforms are handmade. Um, they're inspected. They have an inspection sticker that comes through them. So that's basically what we're doing now. Um, we're trying to raise all of that money or as, or as much as we can. We've had one person... Um, in the Martinsburg community that I know is near and dear to me. Um, they attend every football game, and they gave us a check the other day that covered one full uniform. That's great. So we have about 24 left to cover. Mm -hmm. um, and how, are you, how are you getting the money? What, is there anything particular you're doing activity-wise? So, no, we're just putting it out on Facebook, um, kind of a sponsor a uniform um, is kind of what we called it, you know, because once the, the community really sees 
that really sees you and what you're doing and seeing the success of the kids, that's the biggest thing. I mean, when we did this a couple years ago, when we initially got these, we had, every time I checked my mailbox at school, we had checks in the mail. Um, and there was one day we brought in like three grand just in one afternoon of me checking my, my mailbox. So um, just to get the community to buy in. And one thing that we did promise the donors, um, and the donors of any amount, it doesn't have to be $800, you know, for one full uniform or whatever, even if it's 50 um, you know they're building a new band room for us at Martinsburg High School, and it should be completed um, March 2025. We're going to go ahead and put a plaque that's going to hang in the band room of all of these additional uniform mm -hmm. sponsors. We'll just put the donor's name on it. Just something to give back to them to let the kids know where these uniforms came from. Are these uniforms comfortable? I think so. Um, I know the kids are always you know, complaining that they're hot and sweaty, but Saturday night when the temperature dropped, they're like, can we keep our jackets on? <laughs> yes, you can keep it. They're wool, so... Um, they're very good quality. Where do you store them when you're out of season? Um, in our uniform closet, which for the new band room is actually going to double in size, thank goodness, because we've already ran out of room for all of these. And footwear? Um, the kids purchase their own shoes. Okay. So that's the only thing that they purchase. We provide the gloves, the uniform. We would give them two T-shirts at the beginning of the school year um, that are our band T-shirts that they'll wear underneath their uniforms. So when we switch over to concert band, is that a tuxedo that they wear on on the concert stage? Or they no, wear I just band do uniforms? concert black. Concert black. Yeah. I would love the marching band uniforms, um, but I know they wouldn't. They wouldn't love it. So they like it for outdoor, but right. not for Sitting indoor. under hot lights in that wool yes. uniform and get a little, <laughs> yeah. little intense. So I just do typical concert black. And do you do typical concert program? Is it different? The, the sound... I've done some musical stuff in my past. So the sound that you produce for a marching band, I'm going to guess, is different than the sound you produce in an auditorium. Yes. So um, more nuanced music, different programs? Yeah, and the sound-wise, it's making me a little nervous this year because I've never had 132 kids. That's a lot of bands. And every time we play in the band room, I mean, the kids look forward to going outside because, like, I have to wear earplugs, and I encourage all of them to wear earplugs, but it is – it's so loud. Um, and sometimes it's hard to teach that way because you can't really, you know, get all the musical effects and work on dynamics. You know, you can't really work on that stuff until you get outside. But they know coming into concert band, hey, you know, we're going to have to switch back and forth sometimes because with being at Martinsburg, you've got football games um, all the way up to December 7th. You know, so there will be a couple days, maybe four days out of the week where we're practicing concert bands. So we're a little bit on the lighter side to keep the volume down. You know, and then on Friday, if we've got a game or Saturday to prepare for you know, you can let it rip then, but still with our ears, you know, I have to tell them all the time, but we try to play at piano if, if possible. And sometimes it still doesn't work. There's a, in one of Woody Allen's early movies, there was a, a joke about uh, a guy that played the piano in a marching band. They had to keep moving the piano ahead of the band every, <laughs> every so often there. Casey Rogers Adams is our guest here on the program, the director of Martinsburg's marching band, and they are doing a uniform sponsor uh, drive right now, trying to raise about $800 per uniform. They need 25 of those, so about $20,000 will do it. And you mentioned that uh, there were checks in your email. Mm -hmm. So what would be the email address that our listeners could uh, help you out with here? Or they can just send um, a check to MHS Band Boosters and mm -hmm. send it to Martinsburg High School at 701 South Queen Street, uh, 25401, and now just put it to my attention. Repeat that nice and slowly. Okay, so I uh, can send it to MHS Band Boosters to Casey Adams um, at my attention. And the address is 701 South Queen Street, Martinsburg, West Virginia, 25401. Could you just drop a check off at the high school also? Absolutely. That works? Yes. Right. And what's your email address? C-E-Rogers at k12.wv.us. So C-E-Rogers. All right. C-E-Rogers. And mm -hmm. So if you have an, 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 maybe you intend to send a check, you want to send her an email or whatever, and she'll Or if you can go on our uh, website at mhsbulldogband.com, all of my information is on there, as well as my band office phone. Is there an online way of making a credit card donation or whatever? Um, I guess there is through our band boosters. If we wanted to, if someone reaches out to me, we can send an invoice. Um, but we try to avoid that because our uh, QuickBooks system that we use through the band boosters does take a portion of that. Sure. Um, about 2.99%. So. About 2.99 or exactly 2.99? It's it's different all the time. I mean, every time we go... About three. Yeah. Well, every time we go in there, we're like, oh my goodness, they took a fee for this and a fee for that. And it, just, it adds up quick. Yeah. yeah. So we're trying to keep it all together as much as we can. So you're going to grow to how many members next year? Um, if I'm if I'm correct with my numbers, we're losing 14. I would say around 140, 145. And what was it when you took over? 38. 
So that's in 2001. About four times. Yes. The size, right? Yes. What, uh, how much work do you do at the middle schools so that uh, you, you know what like the next group of talent coming up is? Yeah, so I, I work well with Heather now. She's the director at South Middle. Right. And um, back when I was in middle school, there was a lot of kids that went from north to Martinsburg. But now we're only averaging maybe two to five students per year. Um, from north? From north. Oh, just because where do they go now? They go to Hedgesville and Spring Mills. Mm -hmm. um, but we do get a lot of transfer students for just for band, which is exciting. Um, they come to our step up night and, you know, they see what we're all about and see what we do. So that's that's pretty cool. We're going to keep that up. But working well with Heather. Um, we went to college together. Um, so getting over there and working with her group. And like I said, the step up night is a big thing. So that's really my first opportunity to get over there with those students um, and introduce myself. I always take some students with me, um, some field commanders, drum majors, and then uh, some senior students. And, you know, the kids will be more apt to ask them questions as opposed to me. Um, but then they'll kind of lighten up as the year goes on. And I remember last year going over um, to the eighth grade class and talking to the eighth graders and no kid would ask me a question until I left the room. Then they would ask Miss Now a question. Um, so then she'd shoot me a text and say, here's your question. So I'd come yeah. over, I'd surprise them and come over the next day and said, so you have questions. Um, but are, are they intimidated by you? I, I don't know. I, I hope I'm not scary, but <laughs> maybe I am. Um, <laughs> but now those eighth graders that are now freshmen, are my best kids. I mean, they'll come in, they pop in every morning, open my office door, say good morning, like they're outstanding. Um, so they just gotta get to know me a little bit. So but. what is the most popular instrument with the kids and what instrument do you need the most? The most popular, everybody wants to be on the drum line, okay. which everybody cannot be on the drum line because <laughs> one, I don't have enough drums, two, I need some wind players to right. accompany those drums. Um, and what was your second question? What is the instrument you need most? Instrument I need most. Um, physical instruments. I need sousaphones. Um, uh, pl players. Players. Um, I'm pretty even throughout okay. the board. Um, it was mellophones. And then this year we purchased uh, three mellophones. The kids what is are. What's a mellophone? Um, it's like a trumpet, but like a deeper sound. Okay. So they normally play what the saxophones play. Um, but it's pretty cool because the kids all wanted silver instruments so we bit the bullet and we got them silver instruments are they more than brass yeah we had them well they were actually brass and we had them silver plated um so the kids were excited about that but going off of sousaphones um martinsburg only has six and at the time years ago they had i think 10 maybe i don't know where they've gone throughout the years but um we've got six right now and i have six kids filling those and um over the summer where they were kind of up in the arms and I had one kid that I had to turn away, you know, with the uniform size and, hey, I don't have an instrument for you if you want to play sousaphone. Um, we spent about, I think, seven, eight grand getting them refurbished because they're about 50 years old. Hmm. So they now look great now, but yeah. I need more of them. Yeah, your band is 130, 140 people, uh, kids now. Uh, how does that compare to the other bands in Berkeley County? Um, we are the largest band mm -hmm. in Berkeley County. Um, I know Musselman High School is a group four. I'm not sure of their size. Um, Hedgesville is a little smaller than us. Spring Mills is a little smaller, um, but all the programs are outstanding. You know, mm -hmm. all the directors were all good friends. Um, so we appreciate seeing each other's mm -hmm. success. Yeah. Years ago when Manny Arvon was the superintendent of schools, he said the, the key to getting a, a school year off with good momentum at a particular school is having a good football team. He said that builds more enthusiasm and camaraderie in a student body than, than anything else. Does it follow then that the better your football team, the more participation there is in the band? Does it, does those, do those two correlate? I would say so, yeah. And I would say um, probably, I, I know I talked about this with you before, the biggest thing is getting the kids involved and getting them engaged and like, you know, roping them in, but also letting them do other activities while they're in band. We have a lot of football players that are starters. Um, Last year, if you remember, Xerxes Yancey, Malachi Williams, um, who were all starters on the football team, you know, they were our, one of our top kids in band. And now Malachi Williams is actually, he's not playing football in college, but he's in Virginia State University's marching band. Cool. Living his best life. So <laughs> right there, I mean, that to me, that's what it's all about. Just letting the kids, you know, do what they want to do, whether it be sports. We have a student now that plays uh, polo which is super cool. So Saturday he did the parade, um, went to a polo match, and then came to, met us at the competition. So like that was his day. So just being able to fit all of those things in and knowing that they can do more than just band. That's great. What's the uh, most common injury among band members? Ooh, 
right now we have some female soccer players and um, anything from like your hips down your knees to your ankles. So, um, but, but are there any band specific injuries? Is, is, no, nothing. No, nothing no band specific. tunnel no. or a shoulder. Or, oh, uh, no, no, no. Nothing like that. Sore back from the drums. Nothing. Um, well, the drummers do get sore backs, but I tell them just to suck it up. <laughs> Let's get out on the field because we've got stuff coach. to do. So. All right, coach, way to bring it. <laughs> but other than that, it's just sports injuries, So, yeah. which is, I mean, the nature of the beast if they're doing two activities yeah. or more. All right, what's drum camp like for Casey Rogers Adams' kids? You have a minute to describe the hell uh, that is band camp. <laughs> band camp, they love it. They think it's fun. Um, uh -huh. It's not too treacherous or anything like that. We do have fun. Um, we have. They eat well. You know, that's the biggest thing. They love food. Um, this year we kind of did some fun game, you know, team building activities. We let them go play football. We had water gun fights. Um, so we're trying to make it fun for them. So it's, it's not terrible if, you That's know, like cool. the kids say it is. My, I remember my cousin, uh, going away to band camp when she was in high school. I think uh, where, where I grew up, they went to Teal College, which is somewhere in Western Pennsylvania. And it was like three a days. They marched for like 12 or 14 hours in the sun, it seemed. We are eight to eight for eight a week straight. Yeah, yeah. So it is 12 hours. So yeah, you put in your time. Yeah. Uh, Casey Rogers Adams Hangout uh, second we'll be back with the final 50 seconds you can repeat the address where people can send checks to sponsor a uniform for Martinsburg Band at about 800 bucks a pop there